Welcome back, everybody. We're here today to talk about confidence intervals where our standard deviation is known. All right, for the mean. So, um, the reason why we're separating this from when the standard deviation is not known is because when it is known, we're going to do one thing. When it is not known, we're going to do something just a little bit different. All right. But this gets into the aspect of statistics um, where we use estimation. It's really hard in statistics to work with populations. For example, the population of the United States is extremely large. So to get, for example, our mean for the population would be very, very difficult. So to get our mu for the population would be very, very difficult. So we have to use what we call an estimator, all right? And the estimator for our mean of the population is our mean of the sample. We always hope that we get a really, really good sample and that the mean for our sample will be kind of close to the mean for our population, all right? But there is going to be some error in there. And this entire section talks about how to create a small range so, for example, we're talking about confidence intervals. So, in this, we're talking about being, for example, 90% confident that our population mean is in our range. We'll talk about 95% confident that our mean is within our range and 99% confident that our mean is in our range. These are the fairly standard confidence intervals that we start with. All right, so what do we need? The first, so what do we need? All right, the first thing we need is a random sample. All right, very often it'll be contained within the problems, but for purposes uh, that we're talking today, we'll, th we'll consider any sample that we're taking a random sample. All right, the second thing we're going to need is population where the standard deviation is known. Right, and we use our sigma for that. All right, so the third option is we need our sample size to be greater than or equal to 30 or the words normally distributed, normal distribute in the problem in order for this to work. But for right now, like I said, we're going to be talking about with our population standard deviation being known. So, so the first thing we need is a point estimate. And as I discussed slightly earlier, our point estimate For, our, for the mean for our population is the mean for our sample. And I told you we had a couple of standard confidence intervals that we're going to work with while we gain experience. All right. And we need Z scores for each one of these. Now, these Z scores are ones you're going to use over and over and over again. So in general, you are going to be um, using these quite a bit. All right. So for example, for 90% confidence, we use 1.65 as a standard. Now, typically, a lot of people say that if you use 1.645, which we've been using in some prior sections, is a little bit more exact. But this is a fairly standard conventional um, 
z-score that people use for 90% confidence. For 95% confidence, we're going to use 1.96. And for 99% confidence, we're going to use 2.58. These are um, z-scores, like I said. We're going to use them over and over and over again. Hopefully, you will get to know them. All right. So our margin of error we're going to use the letter E. And like I said, our the mean for our sample is going to be a good estimator. However, we want a little bit of a range in there, right? Because we can't necessarily land on it exactly with just the mean for our sample. So if we have a little bit of a range, it gives us, like I said, a little bit of margin of error. So E is going to be the maximum margin of error. All right. And E equals our Z score. I'll talk about the alpha divided by two in just a second times the standard deviation, which will be known divided by the square root of our sample size. That should look familiar from uh, our central limit theorem. All right, and E is going to be the maximum difference between uh, the mean for our sample and the mean for our population. All right, so you may ask how I got those z-scores, and I'll show you with 95% um, confidence. All right, so if I draw out my normal population my, or my normal distribution, Right, and I want 95% of my data to be contained right in that center. Right, I want 95% right in there. Right, the amount that's outside is going to be alpha. So, alpha in this case would be 5% or 0 0.05. All right. In, and now that's split equally between each tail. So each tail is alpha divided by 2, which equals 0 0.25. Now if I'm looking for my z-score, I'm looking for the area to the left. The area to the left is 0.975. All right. And when I look up that area... And I look for the z-score, it should be 1.96. So why don't you pause the video now, go through the process, look for this area, and confirm that you actually do get 1.96. All right, so we're almost ready to get into our examples. I just kind of want to outline just a few of the steps that we're going to we're going to do and some of them we're going to do intuitively and some of them we're going to state outright so for the first step we're going to check our requirements is n greater than or equal to 30 is our standard deviation known things like that because if uh, we don't have the requirements there we can't use this all right so we just got to make sure that we run that check the second thing i want to do is i want to state my z-score now for confidence intervals i definitely want you to put in that alpha divided by two so you get the feel um, that this is really kind of a critical number a critical value for you so it's either going to be 1.65 1.96 2.58 all right the third is I want to evaluate my error all right so that's going to be our z-score alpha divided by 2 times our standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size because if we do that first it's going to be much much easier to insert it into our, our equation. And this is the equation that we ultimately is going to give us our final answer. So we take our X bar, we subtract our maximum error. We say that's less than mu. And then we take our X bar and we add, oh, move that up. We add our error and that's going to be 
slightly greater than mu. All right, so without further ado, why don't we jump right into our first example? All right, so here's the first example. Uh, the president of a large university wishes to estimate the average age of students presently enrolled. From past studies, standard deviation is two years. A sample of 50 students is selected and the mean is found to be 23.2 years. Find the 95% confidence interval of the population mean. All right, so uh, let's check our requirements. I've got a sample size of 50. My standard deviation is known. I'm definitely pointed in the right direction. Feeling pretty good. All right. So if I'm doing a 95% confidence interval, my Z-score, 1.96. All right. So if I set that up to say... 1.96 times 2 divided by the square root of 50. Why don't you pause the video for just a minute and do this out and we'll get the answer on the back end. All right, so we did this out and should have gotten 0 0.06. Let's scroll up just a little bit. So then we set up our equation. We have 23.2 minus 0 0.6 is, is less than mu, which is less than 23.2, which is plus 0 0.6. And then when I add and subtract everything together, I get 22.6 is less than mu, which is less than 23.8, there we go. So the final sentence that you should write after this is, with 95% confidence, the president can say that the average age is between 22.6 and 23.8 years. All right, so he can use, you know, so for example, if he's giving a speech, or they're doing a write-up for some sort of governmental grant. He could say that the average age of his students, let's say, let's round, let's say is between 23 and 24 years old. And he can say that with 95% confidence, which is pretty good. All right. All right, so example two, a certain medication is known to increase the pulse rate of its users. The standard deviation of the pulse rate is known to be five beats per minute. A sample of 30 users has an average rate of 140 beats per minute. Find the 99% confidence interval of the true mean. All right, so let's start by checking our requirements. I have a sample size of 30 users. I know that my... I know my standard deviation is going to be five beats per minute. Feeling good about my requirements. So I'm looking for the 99% confidence interval. So my Z alpha divided by two is going to be Sorry about that. Our Z score is going to be 2.58. And if we want to do our true error, it's going to be 2.58 uh, times our standard deviation, which is 5 divided by the square root of 30. So why don't you pause the video, do the error, and let's see what we get. All right, so... Let's see if we can move that up a little bit. The error you should have gotten was 2.4. Hopefully you got that. And now let's set up our equation. So I have 
104 minus 2.4 is going to be less than mu, which will be less than 104 plus 2.4. And when I add them together, I get add and subtract 101.6 less than mu, which is less than 106.4. All right, so there is our 99% confidence interval. Now, remember the context of our problem matters when we're talking about pulse rate. We're not talking about 0.6 of a pulse. So in my final answer, I would round it to 102 to 106. And I would say that that would be the 99% confidence interval. Because like I said, we don't have 0.6 of a beat. We either have 101 beats or 102 beats. So there we go. All right, so here is our next example. We'll go back to our college president. The college president asked the statistics professor to estimate the average age of the students at the college. How large a sample is necessary? The professor would like to be 99% confident. And I'm going to say that our standard deviation would be three years. All right. So this is asking a slightly different question, and I think it's important to at least um, run through one of these with you. All right. Now you got to remember our standard error equals Z alpha divided by two times standard deviation square root of the sample size. So if I'm asking how big a sample is necessary, I am looking for what n equals, all right? So why don't you pause the video right now, and why don't you rearrange this formula so you get n equals something, all right? When we come back, we'll talk about how to proceed. All right, so hopefully you did the algebra to say that n is gonna equal Z alpha divided by two times our standard deviation divided by the maximum error and that whole thing would be squared. All right, so this is going to get you your sample size. All right, so I'm gonna scroll up just a little bit. And if I'm 99% confident, my Z alpha divided by two is gonna be 2.58, my standard deviation is going to be three years, 99% confident. Um, actually, you know what? I gotta add in one thing. Um, within All right, so unfortunately I left that sentence a little bit short. The final sentence should say, the professor would like to be 99% confident within one year. And that within one year is our standard error. So our E is going to equal one. All right, so why don't you pause the video and insert each one of those and then we'll talk about it on the back end all right so hopefully you got n equals 2.58 that's a terrible eight times three over one squared and when Everything gets multiplied through. I got 59.9, which of course we would round to 60 because we don't say someone is 59. We don't say we have 59.9 .9 people. That would be one messy person. We have 60 people. 
So and you could say your label would be R needed to be ninety nine percent confident within one year. All right, so those are just a couple of quick examples that illustrate this concept. Obviously, you should do a lot more practice. Um, I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Thanks for listening.